question will go to Josh Robbins from The Athletic. Steve, obviously some situations take precedence over basketball. Can, can you discuss your team's conversations about the shooting uh, of uh, Jacob Blake and uh, how much that's occupied your, your team's attention over the last 24 to 48 hours? Well, I, I think for all of us, I mean, hopefully everybody, everybody in our country. Um, I think when you see something like that, the thing, the first thing that hit me is, again, are we comfortable living in a country where this happens over and over and we don't do anything about it? Uh, and, you know, what we've been talking uh, about as a group for a long time now, well before we came into the bubble is being involved and impactful in making positive and sustainable change. And, you know, so much of this, Josh, is it's the same thing is we need to, in order to make change, there are a lot of things that we can do. I believe that as a league, uh, we've had a lot of things here uh, that have kept the conversation going, but in order to make real change, we have to change laws. We have to change local policies. We have to change the way that we live. And for all of us, the, the number one way we can do that is to vote. Uh, get rid of the people that won't make change and vote people in that will make change. And that's been something that as a group we've been talking about for a while. Uh, you know, as you guys know, I mean, we're involved with partnering with Desmond Mead and FRRC. Um, you know, I had I had some communication with Desmond this morning, and it's going to be something that we'll continue to do. I mean, the one thing that we've talked about, uh, and with our coaches association, Brian Stevenson has told us for a long time, is this is something that's going to take time, and we have to stay at it. We have to be uh, diligent and forceful, um, but we have to continue to do it so that we do make the right change and we vote people in that are uh, thinking along those same lines. Jamie Say, WKMG. Steve, uh, keeping with that, I'm wondering if you saw or heard Doc Rivers' comments last night and if you did, you know, what was your reaction to see a colleague obviously hurting like that? I thought it was, you know, I sent him a text this morning when I saw it, uh, I saw it on the, I didn't see it last night after the game, but I saw it this morning. I, I, thought, I thought it was powerful and it was, you could tell it was from the heart. Um, and I think also, I, I, I didn't know before this that, you know, that his, do, his uh, dad was a, was a Chicago cop. Um, and I, I mean, you know, it's right on. Um, you can tell, I mean, again, this whole thing is about trying to, trying to get people to understand that Racism is a problem. Bigotry is a problem. Police accountability is a problem. And, you know, we've got to, we've got to make changes. And so I thought what he said was great. Uh, and I would hope that everyone would agree with that. Can, can I ask one follow-up? Is that all right? Um, yeah, go ahead. Just wondering, do you see that kind of hurt around the league uh, among your colleagues and, and staff of color? Absolutely. Um, I would say going all the way back to the George Floyd murder, which is when we really started to organize, not started, that's when we started to organize uh, as a coaches association. And the conversations that we've had with, with uh, head coaches and coaching staff with our teams and within our organization, it's been uh, incredibly educational for me. Uh, and I, I mean, I could share with you, I'm going to do it now, obviously, but story after story from each group within the organization, within, within my coaching staff, within our team and within the NBA coaches association of stories that they're troubling and they're not okay. Um, and again, that's why I think that we're all in this and we're all united in this fight for racial change. Um, and we're determined to, to be part of making our country a better place to live for everybody. Lori Nickel, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Hi, Coach. I have a basketball question. Sorry. Uh, of all the challenges that you have of defending Giannis, 
How much do you try to keep him off the offensive boards? Um, he's top five in the NBA in that category, and the Bucks don't even really work on it. <laughs> no, and it's been a big problem for us in this series. Um, in the last two games, uh, you know, it's if you look at it, it's second chance points. I mean, they had 17 in game four. And then our turnovers, you know, which is a, a lot has been due to their defense. But uh, he's obviously he's a terrific offensive rebounder. And one of the things that's hard with him is he's great uh, at getting the shots that he misses. He has a great feel for where the ball's going to come off the rim if it's not going to go in. And obviously he has incredible anticipation and quickness to the ball. But uh, it's a problem. Uh, it's something we've been talking about the whole series. We've been a very good defensive rebounding team all year, but we haven't been in this series. Thank you. And Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Cliff, in an elimination game, how much is having the right mindset magnified, not trying to do too much or try to make up an entire series in, you know, in one play? Totally. I mean, that's, that's what we talked about yesterday is I think that if you – you know, if you if you look at especially against a team like them and say, you know, we have to beat them three straight times, uh, that's a tall order. But I think if you look at it and say we have to put four good quarters together, I think that we you know we did it in one game and we've been close in two of the other three. So tonight, I, again, we had the right mentality to start the game the other night, and. Uh, you know, we were right there at the end of the first quarter. And that's the biggest key tonight is we need to start with the right attitude. When we break the lineup, we have to sustain our play and we have to be closer ahead at the end of the first quarter. Rodrigo Lazzarini from Brazil. Hey, coach. Thank you. Uh, talking about the game, what are the adjusts on the defense end of the floor you have to do to stop Giannis? You know, we're going to be... Um, We've been more and more aggressive with our pick and roll coverages, and uh, it's actually worked out better for us as the series has gone on. I mean, they, they do so many good things, and uh, one of the things they do is they have a lot of different combinations in their pick and rolls, both, both up high in the middle of the floor and on the side of the floor, and it's very hard to, you know, defend all of them. So... With him, we're going to be a little bit more aggressive tonight than we have been in the series. Back to Josh Robbins. Steve, as well as Vooch has played this series, uh, can a performance like he's had in the first four games not only uplift him and create momentum for game five for him, but also for the rest of his career? <laughs> oh, I think so. I, You know, and, and the, re the biggest reason is that uh, he's playing so well because of the way that he prepared. He's very professional anyway. He is a, you know, a guy who has an everyday routine. He's always in early. He always does extra. Uh, but once Amway was opened and guys were allowed to start working out, we had a number of guys who were very committed, none more than him. And uh, he was in there in the weight room on the floor. He came down here. I think he had great readiness. He wanted to be a playoff team again. We did accomplish that. And then, obviously, you've seen the way he's prepared and played in these playoffs against, by the way, I mean, the best defensive team in the NBA. So, um, you know, he, he was an all-star last year. Uh, he was certainly in the conversation this year. And uh, I think that he, he plays the type of, of game uh, which is made for today's NBA. And, and I think that his goal and his reachable is to be a three or four time all-star before he retires. Okay, time for one or two more. Dan Savage. Cliff, you know, how much uh, Vooch, especially when you're talking about the, you know, the progress he made, is he an example of how valuable playoff experience is for young guys? You know, he saw what the playoff experience was like last year and then, you know, continued to make changes and whatever to have success this season. Totally. I mean, totally. Um, you know, obviously, he wasn't happy with the way he played last year. I would, I would say our whole team, to be honest, is we have competed at a much higher level this year than we did last year. And we're, and, you know, and not to make excuses, but we're shorthanded. So um, I think you can see the value in playing in the playoffs for a second of consecutive year. 
Um, and you know, if we can find a way to win today, um, then you never know what could happen. Okay, this will be the last one for Christian Brew EWF TV. Christian, you have to unmute. Uh, Coach, sorry about that. Um, I know you got your focus on the game. Dr. Pino said yesterday that they received $100,000 worth of rapid tests from the NBA. What does it mean to you to know that you guys are, in a way, helping schools get back safely at the same time you've returned to basketball? I, I, I mean, it's great. We're, we're, we're so fortunate um, with uh, the world that we live in within the NBA, and I think it's, it's so critical that uh, we all look to give back. Uh, you know, I think the league sets a great tone with that. I think we, the majority of our players look forward to that aspect of what we do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's part of, of being involved in this league and it's something that we all uh, feel good about. And, and uh, when we get done here, you know, there are certainly things that all of us will try to do in, in our local communities also. Thanks. Okay, that's going to do it. Uh